welcome to your Stitch Sisters class, Intro to Sewing. In this class, we are going to hold your hand through every step of learning the very basics of operating a sewing machine and sewing your first seams. We know sewing can be scary for lots of you, and if this is your first time, you might be wondering, well, what qualifies you two to tell me how to sew? <laughs> Well, we've been teaching at the Sodbury Sewing School for over five years now and we've taught over a thousand people to sew as well as them coming back for lots of different classes and learning lots of new skills. And they all turned up thinking that they couldn't do it. Some of them had done it back in school, some of them had never touched a sewing machine before, um, but many of them, or well, some of them were even scared of sewing and <laughs> nothing horribly wrong can happen, we promise. But by the time they left, they felt confident using a sewing machine and we're confident that by the time that you've watched this class through, you will be too. So in this class, we'll take you through all the difficult bits. We'll talk you through the sewing machine, we'll explain what all the buttons mean, we'll explain a lot of terminology to you as well, so that you understand what we're talking about or what other people are talking about when they talk to you about sewing. We'll explain the stitches, we'll talk you through threading, we'll talk about fabric and all the bits and pieces that you'll need to start sewing successfully. So most importantly, as we tell all of our beginner sewers, sewing should be fun. So don't feel stressed about it. This is gonna be a fun new hobby for you. And if it's not fun, then you shouldn't be doing it. So just take the pressure off and let's just walk you through one tiny step at a time. Let's get started. In this first lesson, we're going to walk you through the anatomy of a sewing machine. Now don't worry if some of this stuff doesn't make any sense at all at this stage. We are going to be going through what all of the functions do individually in later lessons. So this is just a very quick overview of what everything on the machine is. So let's start with power. All machines will have a power cable because the machine runs on electricity. Some machines come with a power cable where the foot pedal is attached to the same unit that goes into the side of the machine. And some machines like this one have separate ones. So this is my power and this is my foot pedal. Then above that here I have the switch. Now this is the power switch that turns it on and off. Not only does that operate the power of the machine and the um, light on the machine, but it also operates the foot pedal. So without the machine on, you won't be able to do any sewing unless you're doing it manually by the hand wheel. The hand wheel is this big wheel up here. When you turn this, it operates the main mechanism of the machine. Let me turn this back here so you can see what I mean. The hand wheel makes the needle down here move up and down. It also moves the take-up lever up and down. This keeps it threaded nice and evenly without tangles. Turning the hand wheel will also operate the feed dogs, which are these jagged blades situated underneath the feet. These help move the fabric through the machine. All of these items are operated by the hand wheel. Continuing on the top of the machine, this is the bobbin winder. You pop your bobbin onto here and then that will help you to wind the bobbin on the machine. We'll go through that in more detail later. This is your bobbin buffer and that stops your bobbin from becoming overfilled. Moving on to here, we have a spool holder. Let me just turn the machine so that you can see. On this machine, we have what's called a horizontal spool holder. Now on some machines, a vertical spool holder will sit upright on the machine. If you have a horizontal one, you will also have what's called a spool cap. This will keep the thread on the machine and stop it from coming off when the machine is moving. Also on the top here, you will probably see you have some threading guides. These are diagrams that are on most machines to tell you how you're supposed to thread your machine. Obviously your manual will tell you all of that and we're going to go through it in detail as well. But these little diagrams just help remind you the key parts of threading the machine. Up here we have a little round disc which helps with threading the bobbin ready for winding. And then this here is a thread guide that also keeps the machine running nicely and the threads not getting tangled. 
The final thing on the top of this machine is something not all sewing machines have. This is presser foot pressure and it determines how tightly your foot clamps your fabric. Adjusting this will move the pressure up or down. Moving down to the front of the machine, on this machine we have an LCD display. This, you use the LCD in conjunction with these arrows to help you select the stitch you want to use. On some machines that selector is just a dial and you turn it to select the stitch that you want using the images or numbers represented there. So moving further down the machine, this bit here is our presser foot and the presser foot clamps the fabric and holds it in place to make sure that you can sew straight lines. And that is controlled by a lever just inside here and that lifts the foot up and down. So obviously you'd lift it up to pop your fabric under and you need to have it down when you're sewing. The presser feet can be changed and we'll be showing you that in more detail later on. Now around here, the metal part is called the needle plate and there are some markings on here to make sure that you're sewing the right seam allowance, which again we'll cover in more detail. In this little window here is where our bobbin is hiding. So I've been talking about the bobbin when we were referring to the top of the machine and the bobbin itself is actually this little plastic fella here. He lives inside the machine and for an, a sewing machine to operate correctly you need two threads. One comes from the top of the machine from the spool holder either horizontal or vertical at the top and the other one comes from the bobbin that sits in this little window here. Now your machine might be a bit different. This machine is called a top loading machine and that means that the bobbin is loaded into the top just here. On some machines you have a front loading machine and there you would just have a little flap here that you open up and you'd have a little door that inside has a shuttle that contains your bobbin. It doesn't matter which one you have, they operate in exactly the same way. The threading is marginally different, but your manual will explain to you exactly how you should thread a front-loading bobbin. The other thing that's useful to know on the front of this machine is that this little plastic bit here slides off. This is called your free arm and it allows you to sew circular things because it creates space under the machine so that you can feed something circular onto it and sew in the round. The other important things to find on your machine are sometimes small buttons like this machine which is computerised but they can be much bigger buttons on machines that aren't computerised. So this button here, you can see it has a U on it. If you imagine a U-turn, that's what that symbol represents. And this is your reverse button. Reverses are used to lock your stitches. And we'll be talking you all through that shortly. But on your machine, it may well be a big lever over here that you can pull down and, and that will help you reverse. Just below here on this machine, we have a start-stop button. Now this is only related to computerized machines because you can manually start and stop your machine without using the foot pedal if you wish. The other buttons that are useful on this machine, which is a Janome 230DC, is that here we have our needle up and down button. Pressing that moves the needle down or brings it back up again. And then this little target here is an, an auto lock function. So you would use this to secure your stitches instead of needing to do a reverse. Finally on this machine, and this is not available on any machines that are computerized um, and is a very handy function to have if you're a beginner sewer, is this slider here which controls your speed. If you want to limit your foot pedal so that you can sew at the slowest of speeds, you can move that all the way down. And if you're ready for Grand Prix speeds, then you can put it all the way up to the top and you can go as fast as the machine is able. So that's a brief overview of all of the things on your machine. Now we're going to walk you through every stage of how to thread the machine and how to actually sew with it. So I'm gonna hand over to Nikki for your next lesson. So here we are, we're back at our machine. And what we will need now is we will need a spool of thread and probably a little pair of scissors. So get those and then we'll start by winding our bobbin. So we will also need to take out our bobbin from our machine. Now your machine will probably come with two or three bobbins which are empty and obviously we can now put thread on these. 
You're, it may be plastic or it may be metal. It just depends on the type of machine that you have. You can see here the Janome ones are plastic. They're basically just like little cylinders and you have a little hole on either side. So on these flat edges you have a hole and that's for pulling the thread through. So the first thing we need to do is we need to put our thread onto our spool holder. So yours may be vertical over here. Mine is a horizontal one. They are both exactly the same. They're just in different directions. If yours has a spool cap, then put that in place as well. Sometimes you get them for the vertical ones, but very often you get them for the horizontal ones. It just stops the thread from flying off your machine when you're going really fast. And I'm going to pull the thread out. So, on the top of my machine, you can see I've got a couple of diagrams. So normally the instructions for winding the bobbin are this dashed line. The solid line is for threading the machine. So it will help you just tell the difference between what the different symbols are. So this one here, is, you can see the dashed line is coming across towards this little round disc here, and then we're bringing it back over towards the bobbin winder. So I'm gonna pull it around here. Now, as you pull it in, this has got some attention disc inside it. And when you get it in the right place, which you can see is just above that solid plate at the bottom there. So I'm actually putting it underneath that gap between the disc on the top, the disc on the bottom, and the round disc on the top. And you're pulling it in between the two. And you can feel, once you get it in the right position, you can feel that it's got a bit of tension on there. It's not just pulling freely. This little disc has got hold of it. And that's what we want to make sure that we have, because that will mean that we're actually winding the bobbin tightly. So pull enough thread across so that you've got a, a little tail here. And then we're gonna grab our empty bobbin. Now I talked to you about the little holes on the top of each of the flat edges of the disc. And we're gonna put the thread through one of those holes now. Now, I'm gonna bring it into this space in the middle and I'm gonna put it out of the top. There we are. So it's important to have it coming away from the bobbin because you can see what's gonna happen is the thread is gonna wrap around this space in the middle. We don't want it going the other way because it's not going to be able to wrap around anything. So it needs to be wrapping around the central pillar on the bobbin. So once I've got a little bit of excess that I can hold on to, I'm just going to put my bobbin, push it down on top of this spool holder. And then once I've got that, I can push it across into place. And you can see my machine has now put up the bobbin symbol which means that it knows that we're winding the bobbin. This is because it's an electronic machine. So I can just press on my foot pedal and that will start the process of winding the bobbin. Now I'm just going to give it a little blast to begin with and then we're going to stop and make sure everything is okay. Right, so that's just enough that you can see that there's some thread on the bobbin. I always do this, even however experienced I am, what I don't want is the thread to have come into the wrong place or done something strange and then you end up with it not filling the bobbin properly because it can become a mess. So just wind it a little bit and then you can check that everything is in the right place and doing what it should. Once you've got those threads on there, what you can do is you can trim off your little tail on the top. Now that's important as well because when you put your foot down on the foot pedal and you start going faster, if you're trying to hold on to this spare tail at the top, you could lose it and then it would get wrapped around the bobbin and that would be a thread that shouldn't be there and can cause problems with your sewing. So just trim it off and then everything will be fine. So now I'm just going to put my foot down on the foot pedal again and we're going to wind our bobbin. So you can see I can put my foot down quite fast and the thread is moving up and down. Don't worry if it stays in one area for a while because it sometimes does that, but it always ends up very even and it sorts itself out. This little 
buffer here will stop your bobbin from being overwound. Because obviously we don't want to just keep going forever, but we also want it to be full enough to go in the machine. And what happens is, as soon as the machine feels that the bobbin, the thread is, is up against the buffer, it will start to slow down and it will start to sort of jutter and stall. And I'll let that happen so you can see it. And you see it's just, and now actually I'm putting my foot down and it's not going any further. So that's what, this, that's what this machine does. Most manual machines will do that as well. Some fancy electronic machines will just stop when the, the bobbin is full. So you just have a look at your manual and see what level of machine that you have and what your machine would do. So that's our bobbin completely wound. I'm going to pop it back again and you can see all my functions have come back here because that's no longer pressed across. And I'm just going to snip the thread from the, th the thread spool. And you can see, I always like to do a check of my bobbin. And you can see, because this one is a clear one, you can check on the side and make sure everything is looking nice and neat. If you ever see waves, or ripples, that means that the bobbin hasn't wound properly and usually it's because it's not been in this tension disc tight enough. So that means that your bobbin has been wound really baggily and it just won't sew properly. So if that happens, just take the thread off and start again. Okay, so we've now got a full bobbin but what we want to do next is we want to thread our machine. So like I said earlier, the diagrams on the top of your machine, you're looking for the solid line. And actually you're looking for numbers as well. Most machines will have numbers that you can follow to make sure that you thread your machine properly. Get your machine and your manual and check how your machine should be threaded. Just to double check that you know what you're doing and then you can follow along with me. So this machine, the thread is coming from here and we're aiming for this first arrow round here. And this is saying, bring the thread around the back, the back of this little connector here. And then we've got number one with a straight line. So that's coming down. So down here, number two is a U-turn with the number two. So that just means bring it around the bottom of this piece of plastic here, bring it around and then bring it back up again. And then bringing it back up at the top here, I've got a U-turn again. So it's asking me to change direction and come back down with number three. Now you can see my take up lever that Rachel talked about earlier is up at the top here. If for some reason your one is down, it's just because your needle is down into the machine. So in order to make it easier to thread, just turn your hand wheel on the side and bring your take up lever up so you can see it clearly. If your machine has a take-up lever that doesn't come all the way to the top, that's fine. It will still come far enough up that you can see and then you can thread it clearly. So we're going to bring the thread up and around and just pull it back down towards the bottom of the machine and the needle. And as it's come around the back of this metal take-up lever, it slotted itself into the eye of the take-up lever. So that's a really important bit to do and to check. So after number three, we're coming down to number four. So number four is saying come down and go around and then go straight again. And what that means is there's a little hook here at the top on this machine and it just means to bring the thread around that hook. Now it's a horizontal hook and what we need to do with this is grab the thread between our fingers and just that helps you get it on. Can you see the way I did that there? So I'm just holding it and pulling it onto the lever and that's getting it into position. Once you've done that, you should check your manual because most machines have a little hook or a little catch at the top of the needle and that your thread needs to be th threaded through there as well. So I know this one's got one there. I had to hold it horizontally because the hook is on the side. So now that we've done that, we are ready to thread the needle. The easiest way to thread your needle, I like to put my presser foot down out of the way because you're just giving yourself more room to actually thread the needle. Get the end of your thread and I like to make sure it's a nice clean cut so I'll give it a little trim before I start it. 
that just makes it easier to go through. You will always thread away from you, so it's going away from you through the eye of the needle. And this can take some practice. There we are. So straight through and then give your thread a pull. And while you do this, just make sure that the thread coming from here to there goes straight, that it doesn't wrap around the needle on the way. You want a nice, clear, straight line from here, straight down to the eye of the needle and then through. And then the final thing we'll do is I'll just lift my press foot again and I'm going to feed the thread just through the gap in the foot and pull it to the back. So lots of machines have automatic needle threaders and your machine may have one. So we'll be showing you how to do that in a separate lesson. So now that I have my thread threaded in the top of the machine, we're going to put our bobbin in place that we wound earlier. And you can see on my bobbin plate here, I have a diagram which shows you how to insert the bobbin. And most modern machines come with all of these diagrams already printed on the machines to make it easy for you. You'll see from the diagram that the thread is coming around anti-clockwise because this little tail is coming off here on the left hand side. So I want you to put your bobbin in the same direction. So I have my thread coming off to the left just like it is on here. I'm going to take this panel off now and we'll put it to one side. But keep yours handy if yours has your diagram on it because that will help you. So my thread is coming off to the left and I'm just gonna hold the thread and drop that in place. So you will see inside the bobbin case that we have this black outer rim and then on the inside we have this little feed mechanism where we're gonna feed our thread. Now our diagram said to bring it round this little hole and we've got an arrow here which is showing where we're supposed to insert the thread. Now the easiest way to do that is pop your finger on top of your bobbin, pull the thread, round without the bobbin unwinding and giving you more thread. It just means that you've got more control over the thread. So I'm pulling it back round and it's coming back around to here. So I'm now going to grab my thread from the top of the machine and we're going to use that to help to pull the bobbin thread up through the inside of the machine. The bobbin thread will come up through the holes underneath the presser foot. So I'm going to hold the top thread quite tightly, but I'm still going to give it room to move as I move the needle up and down. So I'm going to turn the needle. Don't do it too fast. Just keep an even amount of speed on it. And what we're looking for is this thread coming across the front of the bobbin case. Now that thread wasn't there before. That thread has been taken underneath the bobbin case by the needle going up and down. And then once we get it all the way around, we can pull on that thread. Just pull on the thread that you had in your hand and you've now got two threads coming up. So this bobbin thread is now going underneath the base plate and coming up in the hole underneath the presser foot. And so that means we now have two threads ready to sew. So you'll notice that I used a pair of scissors just to hook the thread out from underneath the presser foot. You might want to have something handy just to do that yourself. Sometimes it comes all the way up and sometimes you just need something to help get it out from underneath. So the final thing we need to do before we're ready to sew is we just need to put the machine back together. So put your bobbin case back on, check your threads and you will just need to make sure they're pulled to the back of the sewing machine and they should be about six to eight inches long. So if you've got a really long bit, just trim it off and then you're all ready to sew. So many machines, even beginner machines, come with an automatic needle threader. Unfortunately, it doesn't thread the whole machine for you. It just takes part of the final stage of getting the thread through the eye of the needle, which for some people is the trickiest part of all. You'll know if your machine has an automatic needle threader if it has a lever just underneath here. And when you pull that down, the threading mechanism is engaged. But before we do that, we do need to thread the rest of the machine manually. And we do that exactly the same way as if we were threading it ourselves. So starting at the top, we bring our thread around this lever at the back, and then we follow the numbers. One brings it down the front of the machine, Two is a U-turn back up to the top of the machine, 
three requires the tape up lever to be all the way up so that we can go around one side and down the other, pulling the thread so that it sits nicely inside the eye of the take up lever. And then down here to four, where we hold the thread horizontally to get it behind that little bar that keeps it nice and close to the needle. And then finally, we need to hook it around one of these hooks on either side of the needle that keeps it in an upright position. The next bit, the machine will do for us. So when we pull this lever down, you'll see that an arm swings forward. If you examine it really carefully, it may be hard to see on the camera, you'll see that as you engage it fully, there is a small hook inside the little plastic space and that goes through the eye of the needle. If when you pull your lever down, it doesn't put the hook through the eye of the needle, it may be that your hook has moved slightly and you just need to bend it to the right position so that it goes through the eye of the needle. So to thread your needle using the automatic threader, you engage it fully to make sure that the hook is through the eye of the needle. And then you want to use your thumb to hold the thread to one side and then bring it back so it goes under this plastic hook here and under the one on the other side of the arm. Take a good look how I have it going from one hook in a straight line under the other. Now when I let go of the lever, the little hook that's through the eye of the needle should drag the thread, a loop of thread, through the eye of the needle and towards the back. So now I can simply grab that thread and pull that all the way through and my needle is threaded. Again, just like before, both threads should be through the gap in the presser foot and towards the back of the machine and they should be roughly six to eight inches long and then you're ready to sew.